Welcome back to part two of our spay day with Tiger Cub Indy. We are actually in the viewing room right now. So you can kind of get a look and feel of what it's like in our viewing room. And the viewing room you guys made possible for, you know, a lot of times we have interns in here, um, we have donors, we can have vet students today, it's just a few of us. And then we also have um, screens in here. Um, that big white spot you see on her is just the, the surgery light. And we have another screen over here. And there's also microphones, so um, anybody in the viewing room can see going down and then from our big windows we can see the entire process right now the tables moved a little because you can see we moved our small table in for her um, thanks to generous donors this is a heated v trough table um, great for a lot of the smaller cats, medium-sized cats for surgeries like this. And then we have our very, very large surgery table. Um, so we can store them in Rescue Bay until uh, they, they're needed, and so we switch them out as needed. <laughs> and you can see a little bit like we were talking about. She has really a white belly, but she does have some stripes there that you can see the shaved area that actually go to her skin. Um, I said that she kind of has a cummerbund because she has a really white chest, stripes on her belly that go to her skin, and then a very um, <laughs> white belly too without a lot of markings. So I love when we can get close and personal like this, um, not only for you guys, but we just learn these little nuances about these uh, girls. But again, from this perspective, you can see how white uh, her chest is without a lot of markings. And then she's got around the waist and um, then the white belly again. She is just a beautiful girl. Um, we're just so pleased that with our Cats in Crisis campaign, um, we're able to rescue cats like her uh you know she was part of uh a rescue where she was being sold on the internet for twenty five thousand dollars her life could have been very very different than it turned out um, and we have other cats that are in our witness protection programs that had a really really rough start and cruel start to life um that you know uh, intervention didn't happen the same way it did for Indy, um, and there have been some hard roads. And so to have authorities be able to figure out that she was being trafficked, to intervene, and to get her to a wonderful place during the court case until she could uh, permanently come to the sanctuary just shows the difference in the cats health-wise as well as behaviorally. And so as much as you guys love Indy and Nova um, and all of our uh, rescued residents and the Ukraine Cubs and Daisy and Dash, uh, you know, there's always big cats in waiting um, and small cats in waiting. And our Cats in Crisis campaign kind of encompasses all of that. It's, you know, the the cat, what we call it the captive wildlife crisis or cats in crisis can be three tiered. We have the big cat crisis, which we've seen with trafficked cubs of the Ukraine um, cats of Indy, of Nova, of so many more. We still have the big cat crisis of ownership or uh, USDA failed facilities, uh, which we've seen with Noah and Elizabeth and so many others. And we've um, also see the small cat crisis where the Pib Cat Public Safety Act doesn't even address the small wild cats, let alone the little hybrids um, that we help all the time. And then sometimes we can have, it's not a crisis, but it kind of falls under, you know, our industry. We have um, some sanctuaries that are uh, closing their doors and moving their cats to another wonderful sanctuary. Uh, we've had another sanctuary that um, has uh, rehomed some of their big cats to focus on more native um, animals in their state. Uh, we've seen court cases when uh, 
governing bodies have switched hands and have caused a big strife at the sanctuary and animal care. And so those are times too that when those animals, even we help each other out and move to other sanctuaries, do take up capacity um, for big cats and other cats. Um, but we're so thankful that we have a network that can help each other when needed. It's just we also want to be available to help um, during natural disasters. So many sanctuaries during hurricane season, fire season, um, and other that have seen natural disasters, have ex seen extreme temperatures. So our Cats in Crisis campaign allow us to get enough equipment that we can deploy our staff or even just the equipment, um, loan out our crates, loan out our trans, um, transporters. Uh, we have you know, water tanks, we have fire retardant protocols. So not only keeps the cats that you help rescue here safe, but allows us to be a resource to other sanctuaries and tons of other facilities. So when a crisis occurs like tornado, disaster, fire, floods, um, this is when we don't discriminate. Um, our job is to help whatever animals and needs, whether it's a zoo, whether it's a roadside zoo, um, you know, might be a facility that doesn't have the exact same mission we do, but in those moments, uh, you put those feelings aside and you do what's best for the animals and public safety. Um, and that's what our Cats in Crisis campaign also helps us do is be prepared for all of that and be a resource that's far um, outreaching than just our sanctuary. So if you guys can help us, those that have given, thank you so much. Um, you know, we have a $30,000 matching challenge grant right now, so it's a great time to give. Um, and that, you know, the Cats in Crisis campaign allows us to rescue cats, buy much needed um, equipment for crisis, disasters, deployment. It also allows us to do medical procedures um, for our residents here. So it's a great way to give because it has such a diverse use. And the biggest uh, thing is that we want to buy that customized rescue trailer uh, so that it can fit airline crates, can fit more um, crates. And then also uh, we have a lot of needs lists. So we have temporary kennels so that they can be put up in a time of an emergency. Um, we have have portable generators, portable heaters that can go on rescues, but can also go if we deploy to natural disasters. We also need a customized rescue van because when we picked up this little girl, Indian, Arizona, most of the cargo vans only have two seats. And that means a 30 plus hour drive for two staff on the way there. And as part of our protocol, we don't stop. So on the way back, um, it is another 30 hours just for those two people. Our custom van that we want would be extended height, extended length, and would have four seats minimum in it, but also allow for the crates. So that way we can have more drivers, um, keeping people's well-being in mind, keeping safety in mind, not burning out staff, um, and that we can still take a smaller vehicle. Because we could have taken like one of our Suburbans and a trailer to get Indy, but that meant Indy would We'd been alone for that 30 hours on the trip and if we have a uh, bigger adult tigers that's normally fine and they usually are together um, there but when it's a small socialized uh, cat like her or even a cougar size cat um, it would be much better to be able to go in the van we can um, feed them as needed we can check on them as needed um, they're in our space uh, temper, you know, even temperature controlled and things like that. So that van, customized van, is really important. So um, there's so much equipment and things that are needed with our Cats in Crisis campaign, and we're so grateful for all of you um, that make it possible. So this is a second uh, live post of three. They'll be shorter today, but definitely go back and watch the first. Um, this is a spay surgery for Indy here, and um, we. Uh, we'll be also going live when she's waking up in her crate uh, so that everybody can see everything was a success. And then the next 10 days, you won't see her fun romping around her habitat because she's going to be indoors in two rooms with a lot of enrichment to keep her busy so we can keep a close eye on that incision, make sure she's not bothering it, things like that. Um, but we'll try and do some photo updates so you can see uh, all the entertainment the staff is giving her her TV that she'll have in there. Um, she has mirrors in their 
uh, building so she'll be able to see cats next door so she won't be so isolated and of course the staff will have a nanny cam to watch her and um, she'll get a lot of attention as well and so they're just kind of draping now um, their vet is, are scrubbing in and they'll be uh, starting the procedure in spay it should take about uh, 35 minutes to an hour depending upon um, you know how everything goes, how much fat she has, <laughs> things like that. If she, you know, and so they'll be doing the ligature, which is a machine over here you help buy. That helps solder eyes versus just using a razor blade. So a lot less blood can go faster, faster healing. So we're so thankful for that for um, the big guys. It's a really handy tool to have in place. And then our next big procedure will be in August when we do Tarasa's vasectomy um, and Dr. Andrew Kushner will be back on site um, to help with that and help with our vets. Uh, and so always procedures here at the sanctuary, especially with all of the intakes we've had, all of those cubs that come to us need to be spayed, neutered, or vasectomized, plus their intake exams. So each one of them is having a surgery. Um, often when we get adult cats, uh, they might have already been neutered or spayed, and we don't have to do that. But remember, with all the Tiger King cats, we had a big spay marathon as well on the big guys. So um, your support means so much to us. Uh, we know you love the residents as much as we do. And we know Indy has so much love and support uh, going that she'll have a speedy recovery and be right back out with her friend Nova and a few other uh, neighbors that she has. And we'll be really excited to see her back out and in her pool and everything else. Uh, but this is so great that um, we were able to do this when she's young. She'll uh, heal really quickly and she'll be much healthier for her lifetime here at the sanctuary. So thanks for everyone that's donated to this procedure and so many others to the Cats in Crisis campaign. Um, our goal is just to keep bringing you live posts uh, and show you where your donations are going when you give um, during our matches and during our campaigns. And we'll continue to update you on Violetta and Lucy as well. Um, hopefully we'll have some more videos and photos to share next week. And I know um, we'll hopefully have, uh, our vets have reached out to their vet and hoping that um, they can connect on case history and things like that. I uh, could kind of learn as much as we can uh, before the permit is approved. And so we're just waiting to hear back from the Argentina vet uh, right now to give us more information. We have some information and some um, blood results, but uh, really a full case history would be really great, especially since Violetta and Lucy are 15 and 17 years old. We always wanna make sure that if we're putting an animal through a cost country uh, translocation, that it's in the best interest of the cat. Um, and that means that health-wise, they're not too compromised or they don't have too many issues. That would be a huge challenge for them for travel um, and things like that. So we will keep you posted. Uh, so much going on. And then many of you that joined us know that Cine and Coco, two Savannahs, just joined our family. So it has been busy here at the sanctuary um, and a lot, a lot of new residents, um, which, you know, definitely adds to our costs, but is definitely what our mission and vision is. Um, and as we take in these cubs, we, we know when we're preparing to be here for 20 plus years with your support. It is about sustainability, always being a rescue center are here um, and being here for life of animals not um, just my time or Kelly's time or Lisa's time um, sustainability and succession planning is really important to us here at the sanctuary because this is the final home for the cats we rescue and we want to remain being their home for the remainder of their lives so thank you all so very much and we will um, join back after surgery is over and get to see our uh, wonderful uh, tiger cub Indy uh, recovering in her crate and rescue bay.